Okay, this solution comes from uh, question number nine to the homework unit eight, lesson three, day three homework set. And question number nine asks us to use algebraic reasoning in inverse cosine function to find all solutions in radians for the following equations. Give exact solutions if possible. Exact solutions, again, are going to reference either the unit circle or the special right triangles. So we'll begin with uh, letter A. Letter A asks us to solve uh, where does 2 cosine of x minus the square root of 3 equals 0. Um, so I'm going to follow my steps for isolating x. I'll begin by adding the square root of 3 to both sides, which leaves 2 cosine of x equals the square root of 3. Next, we'll divide by 2 on both sides of the expression. That leaves the cosine of x equals the square root of 3 over 2. To solve this, I need to use the inverse cosine. Inverse cosine of cosine, of course, is going to leave x and the inverse cosine of square root of 3 over 2. Aha! Now, at this point in time, I might say, okay, let's use my graphing calculator and get a value out, either in degrees or in radians. This number 9 says to use radians. I could get my calculator going here and get a decimal place, but they say to use exact values, so I should really reference my special right triangle. So I'm going to draw that right triangle over here. And I remember something about the square root of 3 and 2. Uh, I know that involves a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle, but I better stick to radians. So the smallest angle is a pi over 6. The medium angle is pi over 3. This, of course, is pi over 2 or 90. And then the side lengths, the shortest will be 1. Hypotenuse is 2. And then the medium one is square root of 3. I'm looking for the ratio of square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2 would be in reference to the cosine of pi over 6. So the cosine of pi over 6 would equal square root of 3 over 2. So the arc cosine of square root of 3 over 2 would yield pi over 6. All right? So that is one of the solutions to this problem. Uh, now we're asked to give all solutions. So I also want to take a look at the cosine function and, and see if I can't figure out what the other solutions might be. Now, the way we define inverse cosine is different than the way we define inverse sine. Inverse cosine is only defined from 0 to pi or 0 to 180 degrees. When I draw the cosine function, it's going to look different as well. There's cosine on a full uh, 2 pi window or 360 degrees. So we're cutting this off. We're only defining up to 180 degrees or pi. So the cosine function is only defined in that window. So if I'm looking at where we equal the square root of 3 over 2, the square root of 3 over 2 is going to show up as a positive value near the top. It's going to be right about here. In fact, that is something like 0.866 if you think about a decimal. It does that. So what we just found was this solution. But we also need to get our other solutions out. So if I keep following this across, hey, look, there's another unique solution in the same window. Well, let's use the symmetry idea here again. Uh, in this case, this part okay, is equivalent to the same distance away from 2 pi. So my second solution to this will be 2 pi minus pi over 6. Let's put that all in common denominators. If I put 2 pi over 1 into 6, that will become, uh, whoops, it'll become 12 pi over 6 minus pi over 6. 12 pi minus pi becomes 11 pi over 6. So there's the next one in the same, in the same uh, 2 pi wave cycle. So now I have my two solutions of pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. But we'll have to add on to that all of the possibilities for every cycle. So what we'll write out as pi over 6. We'll write 11 pi over 6. And we'll add 2 pi n to both of those. And we'll say that n is an integer. OK, and that is the flavor of this kind of problem. Um, we're refining all the solutions. And again, it helps to know your your uh, special right triangle, 30, 60, 90 in this case. So let's go to part B, see if we can apply the same knowledge. Uh, B says the 4 cosine of x, then subtract 3 equals 1. We'll solve this in the same way. Again, I know that there's no parentheses set around this, so I do not need to uh, focus on that inside. This plus 3 needs to, or minus 3 needs to be undone first. We'll add 3. We'll get 4 cosine of x equals 4. All right, then we divide by 4 on both sides. Therefore, cosine of x is equal to 1. Well, interesting. Okay, if I'm thinking about it in terms of the circle, uh, the cosine function, doing this in a full cycle, is equal to 1 at the very top. So I do know that one of my solutions is going to be 0 from this. You could have also found that knowing that the inverse cosine of 1, if you put that into your calculator, would give you 0. But I think it helps to reference the wave in the circle. So that's one wave. Uh, this would reoccur again at 2 pi, but nowhere else in that cycle. So there's really only one solution for this. The solution would yield that x is equivalent to uh, 
0 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Now we could also just say 2 pi n, where n is an integer, and be in good shape. Let's do c. Uh, c now says that 2 minus the cosine of x equals 3 cosine of x. Let's solve this. This is a little bit different flavor as well. Uh, here I have cosines on both sides of the equation. So I would want to get cosines all on one side of the equation. To do that, I'm going to add this. I'm going to add cosine of x here and add cosine of x there. Now it's an unwritten rule uh, in algebra that when you don't have a coefficient on your variable, this time the variable being cosine of x, there's a 1 to be assumed there. So if I have 3 cosine of x's and I'm going to add 1 cosine of x, I now have 4 cosine x. All right. And then the next thing we're going to do is divide by 4 on both sides. Therefore, 1 half is equivalent to cosine of x. And oh, there's half again. That goes back to our special right triangle. Or even the last problem we did, we know that cosine of x equaling a half will yield nice values. Uh, but again, we'll do the inverse cosine of 1 half to equal x. This is going to yield out an answer of uh, pi over 6. Now, just to reference y, go back to the right triangle I have here. Um, actually, I'm wrong in that it's pi over 3 because the 1 over 2 here is pi over 3. Okay, and if that's pi over 3, then my values that come from this will be pi over 3 um, is one solution. But then if I get back into the circle or the wave, however you want to consider this, uh, 1 half is going to be right about there. So we have this value and this value. This was the pi over 3. So this distance from 2 pi is also going to be equivalent to pi over 3. So what we'll do is subtract the second one, get 2 pi minus pi over 3, put those in common denominators. Okay, this is going to be 6 pi <clears throat> over 3 minus pi over 3. This is going to yield 6 minus 1 or 5 pi over 3. So my two solutions I'll write out here is x is equivalent to pi over 3 or x is equivalent to 5 pi over 3, and we'll add 2 pi n to both of these, where n is an integer. And uh, that will conclude question number 9.